Hey guys, Colin Lauren here. We've loved having you along with us while we renovate a unit in our triplex. And you've asked so many great questions throughout. And we wanted to take the time and answer the questions we got the most. So let's jump right into it. Always Watching 2 on YouTube said, how much did you save by doing all of the labor yourselves? Ooh. That is a great question. And it's, it's a question that we get a lot. And to be honest, I've never actually tallied it up and wrote them down one by one, but we did. And I loved that you asked that question because it came out to roughly $7,400. And another question that we get is, if I was gonna tackle a job, which one should I tackle? So we decided to kind of go through and find out which one labor cost was the highest. And it came out to be flooring and tiling. So if you're gonna choose one project, you may want it to be one of those two. Right, because the bathroom that we did, you'll see in the final episode, but it's but it's actually one of the more affordable bathrooms we've ever done. And I think the reason why is because even though it was more labor intensive for you to lay the tile, we didn't have to do a tub surround, which is pretty expensive. So it was labor intensive, but materials were super cheap. A lot of you commented, because this is a Burr property, do we still have the other units to remodel? So we do, and when we originally bought this property, we ran the analysis as if we were going to renovate them all and raise rents. But we closed a few weeks before COVID really hit and the shutdown orders went into place. And so the tenants in the other units are happy, they're paying, and we just feel that given the circumstances, it's in our best interest to just leave the tenants as is, leave the apartments as is, and we'll just renovate them as they naturally turn over. And with that, a lot of you guys asked about refinancing because obviously this is a burr, um, but since we're not going to renovate the other units immediately, we're probably gonna hold off on refinancing. But because this is our primary residence, we could take a HELOC out. So if we really do want to get our funds back, we could do that. Parker Faith, nice work on that window glaze. Next thing you know, they'll be offering you a spot on this old house. <laughs> Love that job. How many days of work between the two of you did it take? Interested to see that, plus the numbers. Congrats. A lot. It seems that no matter what renovation we do, no matter what the square footage is, it has been consistently taking us six months to renovate any unit that we renovate. No matter the size. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But I always go back to what Lauren always says, you fill the time that you're allotted. So it seems that we are doing that as well. Right. This is a small space, so we should have been able to knock it out pretty quickly. But with COVID, we had significant delays with inspections, with deliveries, with um, just trying to get our tradesmen in. Everyone was super busy. It was absolutely COVID because appliances were delayed. And this was the first time that we designed a kitchen where we actually needed appliances in place so that we could build the lower cabinetry off of the appliances. And without them, we were at a standstill. So Thought Trail one asked, were all of your time estimates for your punch list on target went, went, what went wrong? I think he means the whole schedule, not just our punch lists. Yeah, again, COVID, everything took longer than we expected. Normally we could have our materials and our appliances ships that week. This was the first time we were renovating with tenants in place. So we were set to schedule around them because they were stuck working at home, we had a student that was living below us. So we would have plumbers, electricians that would come in and she would say, well, I've got finals this week. So we would push things off for another week. And it was working around their schedule as well because they couldn't go anywhere else. They were stuck home, so. Definitely, this was the first time we've ever renovated a property while tenants were living in other units in the same building. And we tried our best to schedule around their schedules and be as quiet as possible. But unfortunately, when you're demoing plaster walls, it could only be so quiet. And my tradesmen love to blast the radio. <laughs> I mean, every day, every day I tell them. Laron Bonner asked, what's the name of the floor you use? We love um, Nucor flooring from Floor and Decor and the color is Driftwood Oak. Okay. Ooh, this is a good question for you. Okay. And I think we should do a video on this. Nick Sheld on Instagram said, what tools would you recommend I get first? The most universal for basic fixing. Belt aside, because that's another video. Tool wise, I would most definitely say a good miter saw, a good table saw, and one of my favorite is a flush cutter. Um, which is a oscillating saw and I just use it constantly especially in these old houses with plaster and lath The saws all just doesn't cut it Got to get the oscillating saw flush cutter 
it's worth its weight in gold. I like the flash better. Yeah. What's your favorite platform? DeWalt, for sure. Ooh, here's a good one for you. Chris Jules Beck asks, do you use the 1% rule? Okay, so this is interesting because when you invest in New Jersey, all these rules don't really apply to you. Our taxes are so high, if we did the 1% rule, we'd never cash flow. Yeah. So we kind of have like the 2% rule, if you will, but I we don't even look at it. We look at cash flow and cash on cash return. It's come to the point where that's all I ask. What do you cash flow? You can tell me how many units you've got, but what do you cash flow? Sean and Jess Invest ask, how do you balance working with your husband and shutting off real estate for certain times? <laughs> we never shut it off. <laughs> it's always on. Yeah, so I'll say it's that. A hobby. I'll say that. One thing that I love about working with my spouse is that I really do think it has brought our relationship to another level that's not possible if you guys are not working towards a common goal together. We're so passionate about this and so passionate about our goal and what we want our life to look like that it really is fun for us. We used to joke that we would suck on The Amazing Race because we would just get stuck at the starting line and argue the whole time and we would never leave. But surprisingly, we work super well together. Yeah. Um, we are complete opposites in a lot of ways, which you could probably figure out. And because of that, it has made running a business super easy because there are things I'm naturally good at, things Kyle is naturally good at, and has kind of created our own lanes. But I'll admit, there is some structure we have to put into place because since Kyle's super in the moment and I'm always thinking about what's next, what's next, I will ask him as soon as he woke up from his overtime shift what time the plumber's coming tomorrow and he doesn't like that. So we've actually implemented weekly meetings and that has been game changing. It allows us to have this space where we could talk everything business and then it allows us to kind of keep business out of our personal life. So now when I have a question about scheduling or a question that I know he has the answer for, I just write it down in my phone and I wait for the meeting. Works out a lot better. Yeah. Nice score. This is probably the second most asked question we got. What are your regular jobs and how do you balance nine to five jobs in real estate? A lot of people think we do this full time. They, I, yeah, I wish sure. we did this full time. Me too. But unfortunately right now I am working full time. I am a state trooper in New Jersey and the scheduling actually works out really well for me um, and time allotted off where uh, every other week I get a three day weekend. So for renovating purposes, that's huge. And then I work in online education and marketing. So pre-COVID, I was working from home one day a week, which made kind of um, running to do house things in the middle of the day really easy. And then really since March, I've been working from home. So what I do is I'm a big time blocker. So I set chunks of time and I focus on certain tasks and you just kind of make it work. I will say we have no free time. Zero free time. And my job makes me learn to operate extremely tired. He'll pull a night shift and he won't go to bed till like 4 or 5 a.m. And then he's up at 9 a.m. ready to go down and work on the house. So. I'm on autopilot a lot. I always say he's a robot. But I will say to help do real estate while working full time, you either need to, I would say, get help. So either have a partner or you have to hire things out. So it just works for us that we're able to DIY things, but there are some things that we outsource. So as we transition to work more on the business instead of in the business, we're focusing on eliminating, delegating, or automating. But to get to where we are right now, for three years we grinded away. I remember listening to something at one point, I'm pretty sure it was Schwarzenegger that said it. While you're sleeping, somebody else is out there working hard and getting better. and you've got to be able to give up those hours of sleep, getting up earlier or staying up later to really achieve that goal that you want to achieve. Yeah. And I think it just helps that we like each other. <laughs> like I have fun. So it doesn't feel like we're working. We have a good time doing it. Ben underscore 59 Smith says, do you guys replace older windows? Definitely depends on the market, at least in our experience right now, the market that you're investing in. To this point, the only place that we really haven't replaced our windows, surprisingly, is in our nicer market because it's a historic home. So we have to replace them with solid wood windows, which are double the price of vinyl. We opted to not replace them. They were all functional. We just painted them and 
redid the trim so that it made it look really nice from the inside. Fresh coat of paint on them and it, it cleaned them up enough. But aside from that, all our other places, we have replaced all the windows with vinyl. It helps on the appraised value if you're burring. Yeah. Sean and Justin Best, question number three. You are on fire. Would you recommend the Graco paint sprayer or stick to rollers? Okay, I have a love-hate relationship with the Graco paint sprayer. The sprayer itself is amazing. If you're going to get a sprayer, I highly recommend the Graco Magnum X7. Now, sprayers in general, I think is where my mixed feelings come in. It is a little bit of a process to set up, and it is a lot of a process. Oh, holy shnikes. That's not good. Our lights just fell over. Um, so, so what was I saying about the Graco paint sprayer? It's not the sprayer itself I have an issue with, it's just the concept of spraying. It takes a lot of time to set up and a, an even longer time to break down and clean it. So if you're gonna be doing a big project, a thousand percent recommend a paint sprayer and the Graco one specifically. If you're just gonna do a wall or maybe you only have a couple hours to paint, mm, I don't know if the sprayer is the best tool. Juan Leston asks, how did you guys finance your deals? So we do a mix of financing. For our first one, we used a conventional 20% down mortgage. For our second one, we did, again, 20% down conventional mortgage. Third one, we used private money. And then for this one, Big Green, we did an FHA loan, 3.5% down, and had the sellers kick back $10,000 at closing, which is awesome. We never told them about private number five. Ooh. We just closed on a property last week and we used the, the HELOC from our first property. Yes, it's an investment property and yes, you can get HELOCs on investment properties, you just have to call enough banks and figure it out. So we were able to buy our fifth property with cash by using our HELOC. All right, this is from Rentals and Travels on Instagram. What kind of work do you guys contract out the most? Anything that requires a stamp for a permit. So electrical, HVAC, plumbing, a lot of them in our area and everywhere needs drawings and a stamp to go along with those drawings. Minnesota Rentals Rehabs has a lot of questions about inspections and codes. So do you have city inspections throughout the rent right now or just in the end? We have rough inspections and file inspections. Uh, if you're doing building where you're going to be taking anything structural down, you have to submit your plan of action, which would be anything that you're going to be building and it may need to come from an engineer and it needs to be approved by the building inspector uh, prior to doing any of that work. And I would definitely suggest submitting that prior to doing that work because I know a lot of people that'll do the work first and sometimes it doesn't get approved and now you've, you're out a lot of that money. I saw somebody ask, how did you know about the handrail code? <laughs> because we failed the first time <laughs> in our first house hack, the duplex, I didn't put returns on because I've never seen that, ever didn't put them on and failed for it, so now we know. I feel like we get asked a lot of questions and the answer is usually something on the lines of because we learned it in our last project. Yep. Like I know that people are starting out, that's not the answer you want to hear. Like how do you estimate rehabs or how do you know you have to do that? You kind of just have to go through it and learn the lesson. Just plan that you're going to fail your first inspection yeah. and you learn. Ash Griff underscore ask, what was the most physically challenging part of a third floor renovation? Oh my God. I mean, honestly, there were so many. With the tenant living underneath us, usually I, I set up my cut station within the project. This time with them underneath me, I didn't want to be running a chop saw every five seconds. So I set up the cut station down on the ground. It was just up and down and up and down just constantly. Imagine how many little adjustments you've got to do when you're doing finished carpentry. It was, I mean, my legs have never been stronger. I gotta be honest. <laughs> and ca carrying the fridge upstairs. Carrying the fridge upstairs, carrying sheetrock upstairs. Killed it. Oh! <laughs> damn. Have fun, loser! We're fit now. We are fit. <laughs> Billy Invest Philly. What's up, Billy? We met him at the last meetup. What camera editing software do you guys use? Uh, we use GoPro 7s and we edit on Adobe Premiere. Marching Freak 4 asks, what's your favorite thing to fix? I feel like you're less of a fixer, more of a builder. Enjoyment? I would definitely say that something that is visually stimulating. So something that has a nice visual look at the end. So that's why I really enjoy doing baseboard and trim because it's a, it's a nice visual pop 
especially after we do our flooring and the wall paint and then you get that nice pop of white baseboard and we've fallen in love with that tall baseboard now it's six and a half inch tall baseboard and we do a base cap on it follow up with some shoe at the bottom and it just gives it such a nice clean crisp look that's one of my favorite things to do now is baseboard when do you decide to upgrade electrical or replace entirely same with plumbing electrical we'll start with that we decide to upgrade electric when we look at the panel and it's out of space for this unit we wanted to add a furnace we did not have enough electric to add that furnace so we had to upgrade the electric and when you do that you then need to bring all of the other electric panels up to code so it was a slippery slope but in the long term because this is a buy and hold for us and we self-manage we want to get all that those capex items which we harp so strongly on up front just get them out of the way so you never have to deal with them again plumbing i would always suggest if you have cast iron or galvanized piping to extricate all of that at the beginning while you have either walls opened up or no tenants in there because it rots from the inside out so long story short because we invest in older homes usually when we're buying the house all of the plumbing and electric is old so we would rather just upgrade it and switch it out now while the unit is empty than have an issue with a tenant inside later on since we self-manage like kyle said i don't want to get the calls so if you just replace everything you won't get the calls are you freezing I'm shivering a little bit. Oh my gosh, I want some blanket? No, I'm okay. Come on. Hey, oh, asked, what kind of holding setup do you use? LLC, trust, etc. Right now we hold everything in our name. We feel that for our strategy currently and our situation right now, that's what we're doing. We are not ignorant to the benefits of having an LLC. So it is something that we're going to look into as we grow. But we do have an umbrella policy over all of our properties for asset protection. Can I try? Yeah. Oh, I like this one. Kalua Boy or Kaloa Boy asked, at what point did you choose to start looking at other deals when renovating Big Green? The day after we closed. <laughs> Always looking to grow. So I, while I like renovating, that's Kyle's special place. I would say my special place is finding and analyzing the deals. Yeah. So as soon as we close, I'm on to the next one. Yeah, I love it. And that's just another aspect of why we work so well together because because we are in that growth period of our portfolio, it's exactly what we need. While I'm focusing on the now, she's focusing on the future. Mm -hmm. I agree. Make a good team. Guy named Austin. What's up, Austin? What is your process for determining rehab costs? Any great resources or books? I'll start with our duplex. <laughs> we had none. <laughs> we had a scope of work, but we didn't really hard and true have numbers down and stick to a budget. We had no idea what we were doing. No idea. But since then, what we've done is used the same materials over and over again. It's an easy, easy way to set yourself up that you know when you walk through a property exactly what your budget is going to be you know what materials you use because you use the same ones over and over again. It also, if you're gonna self-manage, if something breaks, you know exactly what model or paint skew yeah. or whatever that thing is because you use it in every year. Mm -hmm. So we have a big list of all the materials we use and how much we bought it for. And then this is how we know if prices are going up or down. For example, our appliances this time around were so expensive. You're going to see in the next video our cost breakdown. We went so over budget on the kitchen because the appliances were, each piece was 100 to 200 to $300 more per piece yeah. because of supply chain issues with COVID. And what, to what Kyle said, using the same items, you also use the same tradesmen. So I know this is hard on your first property. We know how much our plumber charged to do certain things. So we can look moving forward. Okay, this is going to cost this much. Which is why we will preach forever that your first deal does not have to be the perfect deal. But it's a jumping off point to get those those relationships started and to get those numbers in your head to start building towards future problems. It's a learning experience. Just treat it as that and you'll be fine. You think they can see me shivering? You are shivering. <laughs> Sheltz025 asks, how many doors is your goal? So this changes a lot. When we first started, we wanted... 34 doors yeah we wanted 34 doors 
by like 2040 and then we wanted to spend the next 10 years paying them off so we had 34 fully paid for properties by the time you had to retire at 55 yeah I think, right yep well real estate's fun and our goals have since changed and expanded and grown the lights are gonna fall over again okay um, but real estate's fun and we're sucked in so our goals have changed one thing that I will say not only has our goal increased but we've also are now looking at it a different way so instead of how many doors do we want it's how much cash flow do we want because I'd rather have a small but mighty portfolio where we're having where we have less doors and cash flow more than just having a lot of doors only cash flow a little that only cash flow a little so but to answer your question our new goal is by 2030 we are going to have twenty thousand dollars a month in cash flow after setting aside money for reserves so and that about equates to 45 to 50 units for us kenny green zero asks the best steps to take for getting quality tenants i've always heard and we absolutely renovate by renovate for the tenants that you want all right weird properties attract weird people so when we renovate we renovate within budget to a place that we would want to live in. so that would be my best advice make it a place that you would want to move into definitely and then obviously when you're self-managing there's a whole process that you could go through to ensure that you're attracting quality tenants um, and a good book for that is brandon turner's book managing rental properties it's the yellow one i highly recommend that anna g skep 85 asks does at least one of you plan on leaving your job to pursue real estate full time both of us. <laughs> We're just fighting who's gonna go first. <laughs> We're setting it up. We're setting it up so Lauren will leave first. Um, because she does the management and we're growing our portfolio, any maintenance calls or anything like that, she's taking. And I'm more in the renovation plus managing of subs and maintenance men. So we kind of have a good system set up, but it's more important right now for Lauren to be the one to leave first. Right, because I'm also focusing on finding deals. And yeah. That's what's important for growth. Correct. And we want to start having a family soon, so it would make sense that yeah. I'd be home. Raising kids, raising capital. Sounds like a new book. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Eric Ledesma, great question. How much of your active income do you save in order to purchase more properties? I would say about... I would say I would say about thirty five percent of our take home pay yeah. goes towards buying more real estate, and then we have yet to take a single dollar from any of our properties. All of the cash flow we make goes towards buying new properties or renovating them and setting reserve accounts aside. Nanduan asks, "I'm probably butchering <laughs> these names. I so apologize. <laughs> How did you find the Marky Mark deal? That's an awesome question." So Marky Mark is property number five. If you follow us on Instagram, you know that we give all of our properties a name. This one has a great story and you're just going to have to check out for a future video to get all the details. Another really common question we got is just any advice for newbies. And we alluded to this a little bit before, but I would say just get started, take action, and do not get stuck in analysis paralysis. Every time you do something, it's going to be the first time you do it and it's going to be really scary. And the only way for it to not be your first time and to not be scary is to do it. <laughs> I know that might seem a little count counterintuitive, but you just have to take action and, and push through the fear because it doesn't get any easier. You just have to gain more experience. You gotta just jump into it, for real. It was It's how we did it and it's how a lot of people out there did it. Just get started, get that first deal on your belt and what you thought was a huge problem, a year down the line, you're gonna laugh at and just be like, wow, I can't believe that that was stressful to me. A thousand percent. I just got the chills of you saying that. It might be because it's 40 degrees out, but um, I just remember when we did our first deal, I cried the day our offer got accepted. And There's I a great picture of us. She's <laughs> crying and I'm just like cheesing so hard because it was just the beginning of all of this. And I'll just say that every investor you talk to says they wish they started sooner. So yeah. just start. As we wrap this up, I just want to thank you guys so much for all of the outpouring of love and support that we had throughout this series. 
it was this was something brand new to us that we've never done before a side of us that we've never shown to the public before and to put ourselves out there was a little weird at first but y'all were so welcoming and your comments were so much appreciated and we just had such a great time putting it out there for you and we really hope to continue to put out the same kind of content in the future we had a lot of fun and we hope you guys did too but we have one video left we are going to give you a full apartment tour show you all the before and afters and run some numbers and share all the details with you so we will see you in the next one <laughs> so be sure to like and subscribe and follow us along on instagram at rentals to wealth bye guys <laughs>